I will pray and we can just dive on in and uh, yeah, Becca Grace, you're welcome to make it full screen or grid view, whichever is better. So um, yeah. Oh, cool. Here comes Jamie. I don't know if I am Jamie. I am Jamie. <laughs> hey, Jamie. What's up? What's up? Hello. Do you need me to like change names? Because I'm on your name. No, I don't care. I don't even know what my name says. I'm good. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> I'm cool. so sorry about joining in right now. I'm sorry. <laughs> You're fine. Jamie, the question was that we introduced everyone with was, what are you most looking forward to this summer? Getting back in my house. <laughs> that's an easy one. <laughs> yeah, that's a good answer. Definitely. Yeah, getting out of this rental. I've only been there half a day, but I'm ready to get out of it. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> Man, and you have a few more months to go. Ah, it's all right. It's all right. Hey, it's a blessing. It really is. It's a great house, but it's not my house. Mm -hmm. So how's everybody else doing? <laughs> oh, we got Evan on here tonight. Oh, good. Betty's joining. Um, Betty, do you mind praying us in? Well, I don't yeah, know. sure. Okay, cool. Um, let's pray. Dear God, thank you for giving us this opportunity to meet and study your word. Thank you for everything, for keeping us safe and all that. I pray that we will teach us your word and we'll be able to practice it. Um, I pray for peace and uh, for everyone to be safe. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So good. Yay, Sarah Anna's coming on the call. Hey, everybody. Hello, welcome. Sarah Anna just got off of work. Oh, no worries. There, and we're doing what you're most looking forward to this summer, if you want to share. Um, what I'm really looking forward to, I guess, is getting back to work in um, restaurants. I've been working uh, like odd jobs here and there to try to make some money. So I guess getting back to a normal schedule. Yeah, that makes sense for sure. Normal schedules are nice. Awesome. Well, welcome. So we just prayed it in and we're going to get started. Um, sweet. So we are going to read John 15, 26 through 16, 11. And I'm going to split it up and have different friends read it. So as we're finding John 15, 26 through 6, 6, sorry, 16, 11. Um, I am going to share like the overview of it. So basically, we're going to read through it. We're going to go through it twice. We'll go through it like more surface level, and then we'll go in more in more depth. And if we have time, we'll um, ask about application and how the Lord spoke to you tonight. So um, yes, and I'm going to ask different people to read. So we're going to do like a Bible drill type thing. Um, so I'll just like call your name out and if you could read that scripture whenever I tell you, that would be awesome. Does that sound good? Cool. Um, so let's get maybe three readers. Uh, Hannah Deer, can I ask you to read uh, 1526 and go until verse 6? Um, and then... Uh, could someone read, or actually, I'm going to ask Evan, do you mind reading um, 7 through 11? And then Charity, do you mind reading 12 through 15? All righty, Hannah, you can start whenever you get there, and then Evan, you can go, and Charity, you can follow. 
Um, so 15, 26 through 16. Um, but when the helper comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth, who proceeds from the Father, he will bear witness about me. And you also will bear witness because you have been with me from the beginning. I have said all these things to you to keep you from falling away. They will put you out of the synagogue. Indeed, the hour is coming when whoever kills you will think he is offered, or offering service to God. And they will do these things because they have not known the Father, nor me. But I have said these things to you that when the hour comes, you may remember that I told them to you. I did not say these things to you from the beginning because I was with you. But now I am going to him who sent me. And none of you ask me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin, because they believe not on me. Of righteousness, because I go to my Father, and ye see me no more. Of judgment, because the prince of this world is judged. I have not yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. Howbeit when he come, the spirit of truth is come. He will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whosoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he shall show you things to come. And he shall glorify me, for he is for he shall receive a mine, and shall show it unto you. All things that the Father hath are mine. Therefore said I, that he shall take a mine, and he shall show it unto you. Awesome. Thank you for reading. Cool. So like I said, we're going to walk through this twice, and we're going to start more surface level, and then we'll dig in deeper and do like cross-references and things. Um, so... Who is the Holy Spirit? So um, Jesus names and talks about the Spirit um, a lot throughout this passage. So when the counselor comes, it will happen. Obviously, it did happen. Um, he is the one who will be sent from the Father. He was sent from the Father. Um, so he calls him the Spirit of Truth who proceeds from the Father. He comes before the Father. And he will also testify. He will have a testimony, a personal story about Jesus. So in going through verses one through five, I'm going to read it again. Um, I have told you these things to keep you from stumbling. They will ban you from the synagogues. In fact, a time is coming when anyone who kills you will think he is offering service to God. They will know these things because they haven't known the Father or me. But I have told you these things so that when their, when their time comes, you may remember I, sorry, I told them to you. I didn't tell you these things from the beginning because I was with you. So walking through that passage of Jesus talking to the disciples of kind of just laying out the groundwork of what's going to happen whenever he leaves. Um, so he says um, that they will testify about him because they've been with him from the beginning. So they'll have a personal story um, about who Jesus was. And then he's told them these things to keep them from stumbling. Um, so they'll ban them from the synagogues, who they, where they once had their home. So think about how devastating that would be for them when it's been devastating for us to not be able to go to church on a regular basis or not be able to see our BCM friends, friends each week. So in that way, um, just thinking about the um, sorrow and loss of community in that way. Um, so in terms of, it says, uh, in fact, there's a time that anyone who kills you will think he is offering service to God. So. They will do these things because they have not known Jesus or God. So before Saul became Paul, he was persecuting Christians. Um, so he thought he was offering service to God. So Jesus warns them about what is to come uh, in their pursuit of him after he leaves. 
Um, and then twice he tells them, I have told you these things uh, so that you will remember um, that I said these things to you. Um, so he says that twice, so that's important. So he wanted them to remember it, to say these things from the beginning. Uh, and then he did not say these things to start because Jesus was with them from the beginning. So in Matthew 9, 15, uh, Jesus says, can the wedding guest be sad while the groom is with them? The time will come when the groom will be taken away from them and then they will fast. So Jesus did not tell all, all of them these things up front. He was with them and they were celebrating and getting to be with the Messiah. So um, in that way, he was waiting till that right before he left to encourage them to share the challenges, to share the strife, um, but also telling them the good gift that he was going to leave them. So all encompassing in terms of that part of the passage, uh, Jesus pre-warned them to keep them from stumbling, to remind them of himself, and that the labor will not be in vain. Uh, so in the introduction of the Holy Spirit verses, I'm gonna, we're going to reread those. Uh, Meredith, do you mind reading verses 5 through 8? And then um, Abel, do you mind reading 9 through 11 for me, please? I can do it, but where is it again? <laughs> um, please read verses five. Oh, it's John 16, five through, uh, I'm gonna have you read to eight and then mm -hmm. Abel can read nine through 11. Okay, do you want me to start? Yes. Cool. But now I am going to him who sent me and none of you ask me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. I'll keep reading one more verse. And when he comes, he will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. About sin, because people do not believe in me. About righteousness, because I'm going to the Father, where you can see me no longer. And about judgment, because the prince of the world now stand condemned. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So walking through that, um, those scriptures. Uh, so Jesus said, but now I'm going away to him who sent me. But none of you asks me, where are you going? So sorrow has filled the disciples' hearts, and Jesus points that out. But he says, nevertheless, I am telling you the truth. So sometimes we let our emotions run the show of what we are feeling rather than the truth. Uh, but Jesus speaks truth and says this, it is for your benefit that I go away. Because if I don't go away, the counselor will not come to you. So this is a huge deal that Jesus is leaving us to give us his spirit. So reminding ourselves that when our feelings get the better of us, that we can put truth over it and say, no, I have the Holy Spirit within me. It is my benefit that um, Jesus has left so that I get to have a relationship with him and his Holy Spirit gets to dwell in me. So we we have to push through our feelings sometimes and replace it with truth of saying, no, I am a daughter of the king. I am a son of the king. So being reminded that in times where emotions get the best of us, we can speak truth over that. So that's an example of how Jesus even did that for the disciples, which is so beautiful of that tangible action that God, Jesus himself, did that for the disciples over their feelings. So he says, if I go, I will send him to you. The Holy Spirit is sent. Um, so verse eight, when he comes, he will convict the world about sin, righteousness, and judgment. So we'll dive into this a lot deeper in a little bit. Um, so when he comes, he will convict the world about sin, righteousness, and judgment. Um, so what is the name of the Holy Spirit or label based on that? Um, based on that 
verse eight, what would y'all say would be like the label name of the Holy Spirit? Since his action is to convict. Charity, what do you think? Well, you know, you should say convict. It could be the convictor or something like that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so he is considered the convictor. So in sin, they do not believe in me. Um, so ultimately, that is true. Sometimes we can functionally act and behave that we are the God of our own worlds. Um, so in that way, if we didn't know Christ, we would choose to pursue all of our desires to pursue what we want and uh, not have God's authority in our lives. So anyways, that sin of they do not believe me. Um, righteousness, because I am going to the Father and you will no longer see me. So in terms of that, to know what is good and right and true. And then judgment, the ruler of this world has been judged. So we are all called sons of disobedient and the wrath of God is on us. So this world has been judged um, and because of our sin, the wrath of God is on us. So for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life, Romans 6.23. So um, knowing that this world is judged in that way. So it's a pretty cool timeline of how Jesus said that, of talking about sin to righteousness to judgment, of saying like we're sinners, like we live in our own sin. Um, but then Jesus himself, who is righteous, also gifted us that righteousness of God. And there is a punishment in terms of like the timeline of our life. There is wrath if we don't trust Christ. Um, so in that way, um, we like, it's a sweet timeline of how he was like, but I'm not going to leave you in that judgment. Um, so that's where also the process of the Holy Spirit coming through. Um, so anyways, we'll dive in a little bit deeper to that uh, later. So anyways, Jesus had a lot more to tell his disciples, but they couldn't bear them now in verses 12 to 15. Uh, so I'll read that. Uh, I still have many things to tell you, but you can't bear them now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into the truth. For he will not speak on his own, but he will speak whatever he hears. He will also declare to you what is to come. He will glorify me because he will take from what is mine and declare it to you. Everything the Father has is mine. This is why I told you that he takes from what is mine and will declare it to you. So when the spirit of truth comes, which is the Holy Spirit, it says he will guide you into all the truth. So I'm excited to talk about him being our guider too a little bit later. So he will not speak on his own, but whatever he hears. He will also declare to you what is to come. And he will glorify me because he will take from what is mine and declare it to you. So that is basically a really sweet picture of the Trinity talking about that everything that the Father has is mine is Jesus. So this is why I told you that he, the Holy Spirit, takes from what is mine, what is Jesus, that the Father, that everything the Father has uh, is Jesus and will declare it to you. So I think that's a sweet um, just circle of the Holy Spirit. So uh, any, any thoughts or questions so far? Thanks, Morgan. <laughs> Cool. Well, we'll continue forward. So teaching a little bit more in depth on what this is saying. So who the Holy Spirit is, John uh, used the masculine word echoes. I'm totally butchering that. Um, not echoe, uh, which meant it. So talking about the persona of the Holy Spirit, of him being a he, which is what Jamie spoke on last week. So um, that personal uh, attribute of him being a he. So then going back to verse four, but I have told you these things so that when their time comes, you may remember I told them to you. I didn't tell you these things from the beginning because I was with you. So I wanted to focus in on talking about uh, their hour. So can someone turn to 
Luke, I have three scripture readings. Uh, Becca Grace, do you mind reading Luke 22 to 50, or Luke 22, 53? Um, Zhenghua, can I ask you to read verse, uh, or sorry, John 16, 22? And then, um, oh yay, we have another friend. Uh, and then, or, well, I'm noticing your picture. <laughs> Um, and then, oh no, Rosie is on the call. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> and then Gabe, do you mind reading John 14, 1 for me? Uh, sorry, look at what, uh, look at uh, what uh, chapter? Luke, Luke 22, 53. Wait, but that I, was me. But I'm asking Becca Grace to read that. Joan Paul, I'm asking you to read John 16, 22. John. Fifty six sixteen. Mm-hmm. Twenty-two. So where we already are, just verse twenty-two. Mm -hmm. All right. So Becca Grace, if you could read that, that would be awesome. Yes, ma'am. Um, I was with you in the temple every day, and you did not try to arrest me, but this is your hour to act when the power of darkness rules. Awesome. Thank you. So uh talking about that verse, my um Bible was saying, but this is your hour in the dominion of, of darkness. So every day while I was with you in the temple complex, you, you never laid a hand on me, but this is your hour and the dominion of darkness. So God even gave um, the enemy, Satan, the dominion of darkness to have their hour, but he wasn't overcome by that hour. So um, I think it's awesome that he has his own hour, which we'll talk about later. So, uh, anyways, uh, there's an emotional heart response of sorrow and joy. So 16.6 says, yet because I have spoken these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. So there's a cross-reference, Jung-Hwa, if you could read verse 22, that would be awesome. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, so also you have uh, saw uh, sorrow now, but I will see you again, and uh, your heart will rejoy, rejoy, and uh, no one will take your uh, take your joy from you. Yes, so good. So he was like really knowing and sharing those feelings and emotions of sorrow mm -hmm. being in their heart, mm -hmm. uh, and like referenced it twice. But he says, your hearts will rejoice and no one will rob you of your joy or take that joy from you. Mm -hmm. So praise the Lord that he gives us his Holy Spirit that we can replace that sorrow, that mourning, that loss of missing the person of Jesus being present on this earth. But we get to replace it with the joy of the Holy Spirit that will be with us forever. So that's such good news. So we can continue to like fight through our emotional responses of sorrow and replace it with joy or choose to say, no, I want to be joyful in this circumstance. And then uh, who did I, Gabe, could you re read John 14, one for me? Don't let your heart be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. So also another reminder of choosing to Believe in the Lord, believe in his promises, continue to hope, continue to fight the good fight of faith, um, being reminded that God has the final say and the final um, like moment in terms of we don't have to be um, troubled. We can trust him that he is sovereign over all of this. So moving on to verse 7. Nevertheless, I am telling you the truth. It is for your benefit that I go away, because if I don't go away, the counselor will not come to you. If I go, I will send him to the world. So talking about that, replacing it from the trouble before of saying that their hour, that these disciples can remember that when the dominion of darkness has their hour, now it's replaced to saying that, um, our hour h-o-u-r um that he will send a helper in our place and um it is or in his place which is so good so can i have two other cross-reference readers um 
Brianna, do you mind reading John 7, 38 to 39? And Morgan, do you want to read Acts 2, 33, please? Awesome. Brianna, if whenever you get there, if you could read it, that'd be great. John 7, 38 to 39. Okay. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Now this he said about the spirit, whom those who believed in him were to receive. For as yet the spirit had not been given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. Mm -hmm. So this specifically, I wanted to focus on... Um, so the one who believes in me, as the scripture has said, will have streams of living water flow from deep within him. So if you think about rivers or lakes or oceans, like how vast they are, how beautiful they are, and God is saying that we will get to have streams of living water flow deep within him. And how good that is of describing the Holy Spirit and his goodness and just the depth of the Lord um, that we get to receive that, talking about the Spirit living within us. Um, so praise the Lord that he continues to quench our thirst and he satisfies us. Uh, Morgan, can you please read Acts 2.33? I can. Acts 2.33, being therefore exalted at the right hand of God and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he has poured out this that you yourselves are, see are seeing and hearing. Mm -hmm. So good. So he has sent us this promised Holy Spirit. He has poured out what you both see and hear. So talking about when the hour came during Pentecost. So Peter is speaking about those amazing acts that we can replace that emotional sorrow that the, that the disciples held and um, replace it with joy. So how good that is of the craziness that was happening of all the different languages and fire like being fallen on them. So that was so good in terms of replacing that loss of Jesus being gone to gift them this amazing gift of the Holy Spirit. So what he does, so the Holy Spirit is sent. So I wanted to talk through what the Holy Spirit does in our lives. Um, so verse 15, 26, um, when the counselor comes, the one I will send you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, he will testify about me. Um, so he is sent to us from the Father through Jesus. And that's um, reiterated in verse 7 of, if I go, I will send him to you, that the Holy Spirit is sent to us. So I've heard the Holy Spirit also described as the wind of how, like, we don't know where it comes from or where it is going, but the Holy Spirit is sent to us. So just like we get letters in the mail and someone sends us a letter, and it's so exciting to receive. Um, the Holy Spirit is sent to us as a gift, which is so beautiful. Uh, and then verse 27 from 1527, it says, you also will testify because you have been with me from the beginning. So we will bear witness. The, whole, the disciples um, were told that they would bear witness about who Jesus was. Um, so that's awesome news because the Spirit is creating stories in each of us that we get to share and we get to speak. And the Spirit moves. He is working silently as we speak. Um, so he is moving through your speech and your story as he works through your life. And that's in the day to the day, that's in the mundane, and also uh, the testimony that we all each personally have since trusting Christ and how we get to go and share that um, to other people. So the Holy Spirit is having us be walking testimonies in our actions and our speech. Um, and that is so good. So. Let us change our prayer life to his guidance. Um, 
a few of us know Mela on the call, but my friend Mela is so good with asking the spirit, praying in the spirit and saying like, Holy Spirit, what do you want me to speak to this person? Like I, he told a story, he was walking around five points one time and was just like, spirit, lead me if you want me to talk to anyone. And he had like a whole blown conversation <laughs> right outside a restaurant one time because he was just listening to the Holy Spirit. So for me, that, that really challenged my mindset of praying in the spirit of knowing God's going to give us a testimony and give us the words to speak and to say because of his spirit. Um, so then Jesus promises, too, that he will send him to you. And he did. We know that he did that. Pentecost happened uh, in Acts, what we just read. So that's so good. Um, so we are now going to move on to verses 8 to 11, which are a little bit more in depth. Um, so I'm excited to explain these a little bit more for you all. So this talks about concerning sin righteousness and judgment. So talking about sin in terms of conviction, uh, I'm going to ask for two readers again. Um, Sarah Ann, do you have a, the ability to read? You froze, so I'm not sure. All right, we'll try. Hey, Ken, welcome. Do you want to read for, or can you please read for me, John eight forty six? And then uh, can someone read for me when I call on you? Um, oh, I'm sorry. I, I forgot I was muted. <laughs> oh, okay. I got you. No worries. Um, I'm going to ask you to read 824 whenever you get there. And then Ken, Ken are you, are you good? Maybe not. All right, Sarah Ann, actually go for it on um, John eight forty six, And then, yeah. And then Hannah Deer, can I have you read John eight twenty four? Cool. Go, go ahead, Sarah Ann. All right. Which of you convinces me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do you not believe me? So Jesus is speaking to the Jews uh, in this moment, talking about how none of them could convict him of sin. So he's saying like, if I tell you the truth, why don't you believe me? And talking about that, like no one is able to convict Jesus, let alone like the Holy Spirit. So how good that is that um, Jesus then was able to have the Holy Spirit be the one to convict those. Um, and in that conviction of because you don't believe him is um, what verse eight, or Yes, what verse 8 talks about. Uh, Hannah Deer, can you go ahead and read John eight twenty four for me? I told you that you would die in your sin, for unless you believe that I am he, you will die in your sin. So basically saying that twice of that you will die in your sin. Um, so in that, going back to Romans 6, 23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. So knowing that we have to believe in Christ, and if we don't, that's a warning, you will die in your sin. That's just a fact in that way. So um, anyways, the Holy Spirit is the one that's going to convict, and um, regardless, you will die in your sins of pointing that out completely. Um, so in Acts 2, 3, and verse 37, uh, these are examples of the Spirit's convictions. Uh, Peter explain, explains about who Jesus was, and he's talking um, during the time of Pentecost and when the Holy Spirit first came. He said, God has made this Jesus whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. And so these people that were listening to Peter, they heard and came under conviction. So that was the Holy Spirit working. And they responded to Peter and they're like, brothers, what must we do? And so out of that conviction of realizing, oh my gosh, like we killed the Messiah and that was through us. Um, and so he responded, repent and be baptized, like turn to the Lord and be baptized. So in that way, that's the Spirit moving and working. Um, 
And then one more verse to read. Uh, Meredith, can you please read for me 1 Corinthians 12, 3? Say again, Kelsey. Uh, 1 Corinthians 12, 3. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking in the spirit of God ever says, no, I'm sorry, never says Jesus is accursed, and no one can say Jesus is Lord except in the Holy Spirit. Yes. So, um, in that way, no one speaking by the spirit of God says Jesus is cursed, and no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. So how profound and impactful is the Holy Spirit? Like he is the one that opens eyes and allows hearing for us to know who Christ is. Um, so I know I confess that I take the Holy Spirit for granted in his work because I'm like, well, it'll happen when it happens. And, but it's like, no, the Holy Spirit is the one that's going to do that job. So powerful works are done by the Holy Spirit. He's the one that convicts sinners. So that frees us up to know that we get to point Jesus or point people to Jesus and share that truth of him being so holy and good. Um, so Jamie told me a story uh, on Monday in the office, and he was saying that in the past when he was preaching, he used to be really big about, I got to convict these people about their sin and all of that so they can turn to Jesus. And he was saying that God just told him one day of like, man, that's my job. Like I got to convict them. Like that's, that's what I got to do. And so that he realized like that freed him up to then be able to just really focus on um, the beauty of the gospel and how Jesus himself bore our sin and our shame and freed us up because we all stand condemned and we all know that there's parts of ourselves that we don't like and um, we wish we didn't do or say or those kind of things. Um, so how good it is that the Lord forgives us from that. Um, so I'll, I'll spend like maybe five minutes on, I have a question in this. Uh, are there times that you believe that you have to magnify someone's sin before you can speak the truth of Christ? Do y'all have any personal stories in that way? Can you repeat that question, Kelsey? Yeah. Uh, are there times that you believe that you have to magnify someone's sin before you can speak the truth of Christ? I think on some level, when you're speaking the truth of the gospel, um, like you need to emphasize the seriousness of sin. Um, and the first step to salvation is recognizing that you're a sinner in need of a savior. And so on some level, yes, of course. Um, but then that has to be coupled with really prioritizing the holiness of God. Because if you lean too far one way or the other, then you're not going to see yourself as a sinner in need of saving, or you're going to be filled with shame over how sinful you are. So it's finding that middle ground, and that's where the Spirit provides perfect understanding. Mm -hmm. So good. Yes. Thank you, Morgan. Does anyone else have anything to share of that? Are there times that you believe that you have to magnify someone's sin before you can speak the truth of Christ? All right. Um, yeah, personally, I don't think I have moments where I've felt the need to magnify someone's sin. Um, I guess just knowing that like we're all broken. Uh, so in that way, knowing that Christ frees us from that brokenness and like he is good and sufficient to, to free us from that. So um, <laughs> love that. It's a good word. <laughs> Oh man, so great. 
All right, so moving forward to righteousness, verse 10, about righteousness, because I am going to the Father and you will no longer see me. So righteousness is being morally right or justified, um, having, and then justified meaning having done for or marked by a good or legitimate reason. So God in him, or sorry, well, God in himself and Jesus is the person of righteousness. Like God is righteous and we all fall short of his righteousness, which is the purpose of why Jesus came and why um, in terms of God being holy, that none of our works or our actions could ever let us um, atone for our guilt, like it had to be paid for by a perfect sacrifice. So in that way, Jesus is that full righteousness. And then once we accept Christ, then we become the righteousness of God in that way, which is so good. Um, so the part of the verse, it says, because I'm going to the father, you will no longer see me. So now we've lost like the physical manifestation of who Christ is or who righteousness is. And in that place, it gets replaced. Um, Abel, do you mind reading for me Acts 17:31? And then, uh, Brianna, I'm going to ask you to read Romans 5, 18 through 19, but not yet. I'll let you know when to read that one. But yeah, um, Abel, so, uh, Acts 17 through 31, whenever you get there. Okay, you said 31? 17, 31. 17, 31, okay. So for he has a set, for he has set a day, when he will judge the world with justice by the man he has appointed. He has given proof of truth <laughs> to everyone by raising him from the dead. Yes. So in that, because he has set a day when he is going to judge the world in righteousness by the man he appointed, he provided proof by raising him from the dead. So in that portion of that verse, in righteousness by the man he appointed. So talking about like in the righteous judgment of who Jesus is, like Jesus is going to be the judge of all of us. So he is that perfect righteousness, uh, becoming man of who God appointed of setting that day. So then um, I'm going to continue reading. If y'all want to follow along, John 16, 16 through 18. Um, it says, a little while and you will no longer see me. Again, a little while, and you will see me. Therefore, some of his disciples said to one another, What is this? He tells us. A little while, and you will not see me. Again, a little while, and you will see me. And because I am going to the Father, they said, What is this? What is this he is saying? A little while. We don't know what he is talking about. So, uh, relating to verse 10 um, of how he says, You will no longer see me. So we will no longer get to see the person of righteousness, who is Jesus. So in that way, the Holy Spirit came and he replaces that physical manifestation of Christ to then dwell in us to speak of righteousness and who that is in Christ. So how cool that is that Jesus replaced uh, him, his own self of being righteous to then gift us righteousness in ourselves to then dwell within us so then we get to speak that righteousness of who is righteous which is Jesus so that's so cool and then also in that having that righteousness of Christ he's also sanctifying us so he's making us righteous constantly by pointing out our sins of allowing us to confess in community with allowing us to ask for forgiveness against how we've harmed others or how uh, having open dialogue if someone's harmed or hurt us. So in that way, um, he's constantly refining us to continue to be righteous, to continue to be um, saint, or to sanctify us in that way, to become um, his saints. So Brianna, if you could read Romans 5, 18 through 19 for me, that'd be great. Eighteen through nineteen. Yes, Romans five eighteen through nineteen. 
Therefore, as one trespass led to the condemnation for all men, so one act of righteousness leads to justification in life for all men. For as by the one man's disobedience, the many were made sinners, so by the one man's obedience, the many were, will be made righteous. Mm -hmm. So praise the Lord for that, that he convicts us of our sin, that the many will be made righteous because of the one act from the one who was righteous or is righteous. <laughs> um, so that's such good news of talking about who Jesus is as righteousness and how the Holy Spirit then makes us righteous. And then verse 11, um, talking about judgment and about judgment because the ruler of this world has been judged. So, uh, mm, Betty, do you mind reading John 12, 31 for me? Uh, Zhenghua, could you please read John 14, 17? John 14, 17. And then Gabe, if you could read uh, John 14, 26. And I'll, I'll let y'all know when to read. Um, but you Betty, said John 12? 12.31, yeah. And whenever you're ready, okay. Betty, you can go ahead. Now is the judgment of this world. Now will um, the ruler of this world be cast out. Mm -hmm. Yes. So there's the consequence of the ruler of this world. So talking about now is the judgment of this world. So this world is judged regardless. We are sons of disobedience. Um, there's the prince of the power of the air. So Satan has dominion and um, authority over the earth. It is judged. But also now the ruler of this world will be cast out. So we know that um, Satan will be cast out in that way. So there's a consequence, there's a judgment there that he will be judged and that's a promise that will be fulfilled. Uh, so in terms of the spirit of truth, verse 13, uh, so when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth for he will not speak on his own, but he will speak whatever he hears. He will also declare to you what is to come. Um, so, um, Oh, John Hua, if you could read John 14, 17, that'd be great. Yeah, uh, John 14, 17. Uh, even, the, uh, even the spirit of truth, uh, whom, the world cannot uh, whom the world cannot receive, because it never sees him or uh, no, knows him. You know him, for he dwells with you and the well-being in you. Yes. So another name for the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. So yeah. um, he is the spirit of truth and the world is not able to recognize him or to know who he is or see him. But as Christians, when we trusted Christ, we received that spirit of truth and we know who he is because he remains with us and will be in us. So he is constantly um, showing us what is true uh, through his spirit, which is so good. Um, and then I forget who I called on to read the next John 14, 26. Oh, Gabe, will you please read that for me? But the counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and remind you of everything I've told you. Yes. So the spirit of truth will teach you. So he'll teach you all things and remind you of everything I have told you. So praise the Lord for that. Jesus is speaking specifically to the disciples in that instance of remembering those warnings of what was going to happen to them, of encouraging them that he won't leave them alone. Um, and in that way, we can be encouraged too, because we're not alone and we can hold fast to his promises and he'll continue to remind them. If you memorize scripture, that's so good because in situations that are sticky or just walking around having a casual day, like God can have those scripture memories uh, come to your mind so he can use that. He will remind you of everything that Jesus has told us. So 
Uh, in terms of guidance, verse 13, it says that the Holy Spirit will guide you into all truth. So uh, in Acts 31, we won't read that story, but there's a story of an Ethiopian eunuch, and he was traveling along the roadside, and one of Jesus's disciples was walking past, and um, he heard him reading the book of Isaiah, and he heard him reading it out loud. And so he asked him, do you understand what you're reading? And he said, the Ethiopian man replied saying, how am I to know unless someone guides me? Um, so I thought that was really cool of knowing that we get to guide other people. Um, and in Psalms 25, 5, it says, guide me in your truth and teach me. So in that way, as we are getting guided by the word of God, as we spend time with the Lord, as we spend time doing Bible studies like this, as we spend time um, making a disciplined practice to study the Bible, uh, we get to ask the Lord to guide us in his truth and to teach us. So when we are discipling our own selves or having a mentor or a smaller Bible study group or groups like this, um, we get to be guided. And then from there, we then get to go and guide other people. So like this Ethiopian man needed help to understand what he was reading, we then get to go and guide other people just like what the Holy Spirit is doing um, with us. So in that way of having that tangible uh, example of how God speaks to us and how he moves. Uh, and then verse 14 and 15, he will glorify me because he will take from what is mine and declare it to you. So everything the father has is mine. This is why I told you that he will take from what is mine and will declare it to you. So he repeats that twice. So it's a big deal when it's repeated twice. Um, so he'll take what is mine and declare it to you. So that's good news that he is going to speak to us. He's going to declare things to us. Um, so I wanted to remind you too about what I just shared of being guided, asking the spirit to lead you as you pray. Um, as we pray without ceasing, like asking the Lord, God, like show me, do you want me to speak truth to this person to like use me to speak your truth to whatever this person needs to hear? Um, there's a man at my church who passed a, like about two years ago and the pastors always share stories of, man, Steve knew always what I needed to hear. And so I guess Steve had a practice that whenever he had like a work lunch meeting or just was meeting with a friend in the church or just a friend, uh, he would always ask the Holy Spirit to guide him to uh, use him to be a vessel of like, Lord, use me if you want me to say anything that you want this person to hear from you. And many stories were to be had of how Steve just was like, wow, speaking truth of what that person needed to hear. Um, so uh, two other stories of like the spirit guiding. Um, this woman, her name is uh, Jessica Splon. She's married to Stephen Splon, who works for the SCBC. Yeah, she's great. So uh, I did a discipleship class with Katie and um, Stephen was doing his discipleship curriculum called Immersion. And so I was part of uh, Jessica's small group for that weekend discipleship. And so she was talking about how the Holy Spirit guides and like he will tell us like when to move and when to do things. And so she sh shared a story of her friend not responding to the Spirit. Um, and so her friend's story was that uh, basically she, this woman had lost her son and she was by his graveside and was like mourning and like crying over her son and just asked God like, Lord, will you please send me a friend? And like, <laughs> for whatever reason, she wanted ice cream. And so she was like, God, if you could bring them ice cream. And so her other friend felt like a weird urge like in herself like she was out in the yard with her family like hanging out and she felt like a weird urge to like go and see that friend and like bring her ice cream and she was like that's weird like that's so out of the blue like why should I do that like I don't like no I'm not gonna do that <laughs> and so she ended up like not doing that and so a few days later like that friend she lost her son was was telling her like you know I was really praying to the Lord of like 
can you like please bring me a friend in this time and um so in that way like she didn't respond to the spirit's prompting of that and just like felt so sad so um just because blonde was sharing that story in terms of how sometimes like we can um not allow the spirit to move and to work through us as a church body to uh get to build up the um church body in that way because sometimes we're like oh that's strange or whatever um so god can totally use us in such strange ways that we may not know why um and then i have a personal story of the lord guiding me of when i first started at bcm as an intern i was working part-time so i was looking for another job and at the time i lived out in irmo at um close to this place called art smart academy and so i kept driving past it and i was like oh it'd be sweet to check that out because i studied art education for undergrad and uh one sunday afternoon i had nothing going on and i was driving past it and like drove completely past it and i just felt like god prompting me of like go check it out and then i was like oh, okay fine so i then like looped around by the cvs like I went through the light, had to take a left, had to take another left, and then take another left to turn into there. So it was like an extra um, like five minutes or whatever. But anyways, I walked in through the door and the woman who owns the place, her name's Catherine, she's a Christian. And so I ended up like asking if she was taking any uh, part-time positions and she said she was and she's like oh my gosh you're an answer to prayer when she learned about like my art education background and that was just like wow that's so cool because she had been praying for someone she had like a lot of staff turnover so like even in that way like we get to be pictures of answering prayers of how the holy spirit moves in his body so just like listening to the lord in that way and listening to his guidance like he is good in that way so um anyways to wrap this up how is it applicable uh this is why we have the holy spirit within us he is our counselor he is our helper he is our spirit of truth he is my guidance he makes us righteous he continues to refine us into righteousness aka sanctification making us look more holy and more like him and he takes what is christ and he will declare it to you so he wants us to continue to love each other as as Christians, as the body, and we get to serve him in that way and know that he is with us. So God himself is living and working in me and through me, and I am not by myself. Uh, so there's one last verse. Uh, Morgan, would you mind reading John 14, 16 through 17? Sorry, that was my bad for the awkward silence for a second. <laughs> <You're totally> uh, <laughs> we'll say that again. <laughs> John 14, 16 through 17. 14, 16 through 17. Got it. Okay. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper to be with you forever, even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. Yes, thank you. So... In terms of that, I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper to be with you forever. So God himself describes him as a helper. And for you ladies, that means like a Zaire and God calls us as woman helper and God himself defines his own self as helper. And that's so cool that we get to be helpers. So little side note there, but God sends us a helper, the Holy Spirit to be with us forever. So uh, in a sermon that my church did at Midtown, um, Brandon Clements spoke and he talked about the um, Greek word of parakletos, which is the name of the Holy Spirit. So para is a root word for <laughs> where we get the word parasite of how a parasite is stuck to you and like stuck on your body. Uh, so in that way, parakletos, um, that means someone who is called to one side, especially to one's age, one who pleads for another's cause before a judge, um, an advocate, one who pleads um, for, for another's cause with one who is an intercessor. 
So with Christ in his exaltation to God's right hand, pleading with God for the pardon of our sins. And then in the widest sense, a helper, a secure, an aider, an assistant of the Holy Spirit destined to take the place of Christ with the apostles to lead us into a deeper knowledge of the gospel of truth and to give them divine strength needed to enable them to undergo trials and persecutions on behalf of the divine kingdom. Um, so that was talking about the definition of parakletos. So in that sermon he closed out, which I'm gonna close out the same way he did of talking about that we are never alone, that the Holy Spirit dwells within us. So we don't eat alone, we don't talk on the phone alone, we don't study alone, we don't eat cereal alone, we don't drive on car, long car rides alone, like he is with us forever dwelling in us. So that is such good news, like a parasite. <laughs> So uh, in that way, uh, I just wanted to remind you guys of that good news. And my closing out question, since we have like five minutes before we'll pray it out, I wanted to ask if there was any, um, if there's anything that we learned tonight that you are personally going to apply and remember from uh, this passage from Romans 15, 26 through sixteen eleven. I would say, oh, sorry. no, go ahead. Just um, being reminded that it's the Holy Spirit that convicts. Um, and I think uh, when, when the Holy Spirit convicts, it's one of those things where you either have two reactions. Um, one is like pushback. No, like, no, I like my sin. I want to keep sitting in my sin. I'm going to ignore this feeling of conviction from the Spirit or two, having a real sense of shame and just sitting in the shame and not taking those next steps of, okay, well, how do I repent from this conviction? How do I turn away from my sin now that the Holy Spirit has pointed it out to me? And I think that the middle ground that you can find there is allow the Spirit to convict. And then the Spirit also is, the per is like you said, the perfect helper to help us overcome that sin. So then it's it's not like you get convicted and this, then the spirit just tosses you to the wind, like, okay, deal with it. No, like the spirit is a perfect helper to help us every single day with the Father's new mercies every morning mm -hmm. to work in battling that sin so that we can walk closer with Jesus each and every day. The Lord doesn't want us to sit in our sin. That's why he sent us the spirit so that we could recognize our sin and then take steps to overcome it in Jesus name. And so just allowing myself to be convicted and just move forward from there. It's like, okay, I let myself be convicted by this. Thank goodness for the spirit pointing this out in my life. Now, okay, what do I do next? And being able to rely and lean on the spirit for those next steps too. Mm -hmm. That's so good. Does anyone else have any takeaways they'd be willing to share? This isn't as much a like a practical application in terms of life, but um, what the Spirit is said to do um, that's just all the other attributes or titles are really interesting. And I just want to mention this before I forget it. Um, you know, I'd made or I'd talked about, you know, something about the Trinity in music and just the, a bunch of the specific things that you were mentioning had direct correspondences in music theory. And I guess um, just if, if anybody's still interested in that, um, just feel to, just feel free to direct message me because there's a lot of really rich things that I'm learning here, but that have really incredible correspondences in what makes music beautiful. That's great. I love that.
We have time for one or two more people if they want to share any takeaways or personal applications. Betty, can I ask you? Yeah, sure. Um, I guess just the Holy Spirit being um, convict and um, like the example that you said about being a prayer for somebody and like it's just God leading you to that. And um, I think that works with me for uh, when I came to this country. Um, I was confused, but uh, the Lord led me here. So um, yeah, that's what I was thinking when you were telling the stories. I think that's just God leading you. Um, it's not like having somebody tell you. It's sometimes it's like that, but then just living inside you, um, mm. just being the voice and convince you when you do something wrong. Yeah. Mm. So good. Yes. Love that. Well, unless someone's really wanting to share, I'll close this out in prayer. All righty. Cool. I'll close this out. Um, dear Lord, thank you so much for this time together. Uh, God, we just praise you for the fact that we have Zoom as a platform to still meet virtually when we all live in such different areas and places. And um, God, we praise you for that gift. And uh, thank you so much for the gift of the Holy Spirit. God, thank you for opening up our eyes to see how you have sent a helper that you said it is better for that I go. It is for your benefit that I leave. Um, talking from the voice of Jesus and how you have gifted us a helper, a counselor, a guider, a convictor, um, one who will um, judge all things. And God, we praise you that you and your Holy Spirit dwells within us, that we uh, have you forever and we will never be alone. So God, we praise you for that good news. So help us to continue to walk, to abide in you and in your truth and uh, thank you for your constant grace and mercy and lord i just ask and pray that you would continue to allow us to uh, see where you are leading and guiding and allow us to um, push into fighting sin uh, with the help of your spirit push through um, having hard conversations or uh, loving the people around us better that you've uh, placed in our lives right now for this season and for the summer and uh, God, we praise you just overall for the gift of uh, who the Holy Spirit is and um, just what an incredible gift he is to us. So thank you for your goodness and your mightiness and your wise counsel and uh, just help us to have a great week and to continue to trust you and to lean into you as this week continues. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yeah. Cool. Thank you, friends. This has been so good. You did yeah, great. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. You did great, Kelsey. Thank you, buddy. I had fun, like, learning and all of that. It was great. <laughs> Thanks, friends. I appreciate it. I hope it was cool, too, with, like, different styles of reading and all of that. Look at your cute kitty, Morgan. <laughs> yeah, she was raising her hand for you. Good job. Cute. <laughs> Love that. Oh, well, yay. I'm so glad you guys came and joined. So y'all are welcome to hang out or whatever y'all want to do. Now, if y'all got to go, you're welcome to peace out too. So yeah. I've got to head out, friends. But next week, come back because I'll be teaching too. So we're going to have a grand old time. <laughs> It'll be great. <laughs> I'm excited. <laughs> All right. I'll see you guys later. Y'all have a good night. Bye, Morgan. Becca Grace, can you, you can stop.